Hey there, this is TJ with ShopBot Tools, and for this week's training, we're going to look into turning the physical into the digital. So this is where you have an actual part that physically exists, and how do we bring that into our CAD software, toolpath this, cut this out. So we're recreating something that already exists. How do we digitize that part? So let's get started with digitizing your work. So some examples of this. Um, Trim, molding, that's a big one. I actually had uh, Tom Yoakum actually sent in a couple of pictures uh, where you can see some chair parts here. He had some irregular shaped uh, parts off a rocking chair. So whether you have a pattern or a jig or something from earlier that you were maybe using with your traditional machines, this is where it's nice to look at the examples that we're going to show you today and how you can explore bringing them in and making them into your digital world so now you can you know easily replicate these so let's look at this as we go through it's a couple different options so 3d scanner is an option and I just uh, put a few pros and cons here and when I say 3d scanner there are so many different ones out there uh, anywhere from your Xbox Connect uh, with the gaming system Xbox there's a connect that's a add on to that um, that can you know 3d scan somebody um, to they have all kinds of hand scanners and, 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 and things that you hold in your hand and hold over a part up to you know several thousand dollar scanners which are you know going to be a lot more precise so just so you know there is a big window between cheap ones and very expensive ones obviously the more expensive the nicer the scanner the more detail it's going to be um, so just weigh out your pros and cons of what kind of part you're doing if you have a 3d image that you need to be you know digitized and brought in it, 3d scanner really is the way to go because it's going to give you the best um, it, it's going to get, get the, your part the closest to what it really is um, uh, just a couple things to point out too you know you find some of these uh, companies that have 3d scanners that will scan parts for you and bring them in just remember that you know you do have to a lot of the times you're gonna have to send your part out to them so it can take some time to get the part sent to the company have them scan it and then sent back so there's something to look out for you know their turnaround time if that's something that you're going to do so there's some pros and cons of the 3d scanner um, another one is just drawing it yourself you know and uh, again this depends on the complexity of the part is how how hard of a part that you have to recreate um, some some parts are if you're really proficient with the software you could just you know go into your um, you know vcarve or aspire software that came with your shop bot and and recreate it itself if it's something that's a lot more complex where you need to use some of these other um, heavier duty softwares it could get expensive or you have to learn how to use these so it's just a, it's another option um, is actually recreating the part and drawing it um, uh, this one here is one where you can take a picture of it and import it in um, certain parts that people like to just take a you could take a picture and then you do a JPEG trace um, and we'll do this one as an example in today's demonstration and um, uh, just I want to point out this one you know you gotta we'll look at this but this one you gotta be very careful with um, pointing down directly onto the camera you want to be directly above it 90 degrees otherwise if you're off as far as not being centered above it and parallel to the part you're gonna have shadows where you're gonna have the edges here and it's gonna throw off so um, that's one uh, another option and then another option too is a digitizing probe and again this will be one that we'll look at today too and uh, what's nice about a digitizing probe is that you can take an existing part, maybe it's even a broken part, and you know tape it back together or you know hold it in place, and then you can scan this. Technically, is what this is probe is going to do, and uh, we'll look at examples of probing to date um, and uh, pros and cons of that. So, uh, digitizing probe is something as another option. Uh, once you actually get the part digitized um, meaning that whichever option it is that you chose when you bring it into the software you do need to check the size and make sure you know if you probed it it's going to be off by the diameter of the the probe tip um, if you if you took a picture of it is it scaled to the right size um, obviously if you redrew it did you draw it correctly and again if it's coming in from a 3d scanner um, again just your ratio scale size make sure it's the right one so uh, this is what you'll do now whatever CAD software that you bring it into and then when you get the part the way you want it 
in the software and it looks right then you can go ahead and optimize your part however many it is that you need to cut you can put different things on layers you can do your toolpath templates from other projects and bring all this in and really dial this in so let's go take a look out on the shop bot at a few different examples and see how we would digitize uh, a couple existing parts all right, the first example we'll look at is taking a picture of a physical part and then importing it in just like you would import in a JPEG. And just to disclaimer, remember, you know, we're looking at a lot of different ways of importing in. Now, the taking a picture of a part and bringing it in, that might be a good method of replacing that reindeer that you've had out in your front yard for the last 20 Christmases and, you know, grandpa ran it over with the snowblower this year and you need to create a new set of legs for them and instead of pulling it out of the bandsaw you could take a picture of the part bring it in and get it close enough to cut it out that's not a problem um, if this was a high precise gear that I needed to go into a clock mechanism I'm probably not going to use this method so think about the different um, methods when you're trying to scan in your part and which one works for your example so I took a couple different pictures and just so you know they're just JPEG files and you can see the size are pretty big files um, so they're going to have a pretty good resolution on this uh, also just want to show you the different I took them against different backgrounds so if you're going to do the option where you bring in something to trace it it's nice to have it going against different backdrops I just do want to point out though the one on the far left here has a very solid black color where the one on the far right has a lot of pattern this is just on a concrete so when you do a trace, you're going to have more noise or filter, I should say, coming through there that you're going to need to noise that you're going to need to filter out. Uh, so you know it is good to get different contrast for backdrops, and then also um, just have an option here for when you're bringing things in. So I'm just setting up a new file here. The work surface I'm working with is 24 inches long by 8 inches. I'm going to cut this out of half inch material. And what I'm going to do in this example here is import it a bitmap, which is this little icon right here with the bird on it. And you can see the one on the far left that I bring in is the one that had the solid black background to it. And it's a big image, so it's going to computer's going to take a minute to bring this in. But what I was saying earlier, when you take pictures, now this is just taken out on the shop floor. Uh, this would not be my choice for uh, doing this object because it has a couple holes. And what I want to point out to you here is you can see this hole that's going across here. You can actually see the top edge and the bottom edge. So with that being said, I'm not perfectly parallel to this part with my taking picture. This was me just holding a camera looking down. So the precision of my picture taking is already going to throw off this image. So if this was something that you really wanted, I would recommend you know, using a tripod and mounting it so the camera can go straight down, maybe making some sort of a fixture or a jig. Uh, we have a few customers that come through every time to time that have you know, rent a traditional wood shop and they have all kinds of different patterns and stuff where you know, they, they've done this option where they've made a way to take pictures of their patterns so that it's perfectly parallel to the part where they made a little uh, contraption to hold their camera which points perfectly straight down uh, so it will um, get rid of stuff like this but I want to trace this one so you can see what I'm talking about and if I come down here to my trace bitmap image um, it does a really good job of blacking it out uh, having that background contrast, you can see it really broke up the color. But I just wanted to point out too, you know, that does look like a perfectly round circle right here. But just for, you know, remember, this right here is going to be off because you can see that edge. So just um, watch that. And then again, if this is something that you were going to follow through even further, uh, there is a couple tutorials out there on tracing bitmaps and explaining more of the defaults and the bitmap fading for getting optimal contrast. But I just wanted to point out here when I do preview, um, it currently has everything grouped, which is going to make everything locked together. A lot of times you're going to be doing editing when you do this type of a trace. So I like to ungroup things so that it's not grouped together when it does that trace. And without going into more detail and messing with all that stuff, if I hit apply and close, um, you can see that it does a perfectly good job of what it's supposed to be doing by tracing around. But with this image and that background you can see that I wasn't able to get those nice 
smooth curve along here using that image. And that is with this being what we thought a perfectly black background, but notice you can actually see all the different ribs from the texture on that. So um, this is why I took pictures of with different backdrops and bring them in. So um, what I'm trying to point out with this one is, uh, yes, we could sit here for 20 minutes and edit this one. I could go through and check all my different images and get the right one. For me, I just know this isn't the right option. I would, I really don't want to use my bitmap trace for this type of part because it's going to have too much user cleanup. Uh, me <laughs> sitting here with node editing and cleaning all this. So um, uh, again, this is an option and it works with several other parts. Just in this case for this rocking chair part, this would not be the one by choice I would use. So here's an example of one where I like to import in a picture and trace is this big moose here. Uh, this was something uh, my dad had cut out traditionally a few years back. The wind got a hold of him and blew him over and it broke his antlers and the little piece that connects the antlers. So instead of having him bandsaw and jigsaw all those again, uh, I took the piece, I said just take a picture of it, tell me the longest measurement from the front to the back of the antler and shoot me a uh, a picture with the measurement and I'll have a couple of them cut for you and sent up to you no problem so so with his picture I was able to come in obviously do the bitmap trace save you from watching me fumble around here trying to clean this up but what I did was I took again his longest his measurement that he had sent and I used that for selecting my object size here and Right here, as I know overall what my length is, I, I can scale this using the set size tool. Um, and again, you can use your measuring. And I actually had him measure me from tip to tip. That was 49.7. And I ended up scaling it just a little bit so it would fit the 48 inches that he had. And again, that's just a matter of changing the size, getting it exactly the way the original one was. It's close enough for this. It's a moose going out for Christmas time it's probably going to get blown over again because you'll forget to stake it <laughs> there's another training <laughs> um, so made the cowl here the antler and then um, uh, again just cleaned them up you know this is where you're going to hone in your node editing skills this is where you'll do your set size object size and um, you can reference some of those other tutorials for learning how to do node editing and stuff so uh, that's one option is bringing in a picture now let's look at the next here we're actually going to get the digitizing probe out and put that on the shop bot you can see what the probe looks like but i'm going to take it out of the spindle so we can put our piece down so to do this i like to use two-sided tape all we're doing is holding our part. The probe doesn't put any pressure on the side of your piece when it's touching it. For this example, we're going to do a 2D probe all the way around the perimeter of this. Um, I would point out when you purchase your probe, it does come with a little mount where you attach the probe. It mounts on the side of your YZ plate or on the side of your spindle. Uh, I do know a lot of customers like to just put the thing right into the quarter inch collet on their spindle. I just want to warn you if you're going to do that, I'm going to do it in this example here so you can see what most people actually end up doing, is they do put it in there instead of putting that mount on. Uh, I would advise against it. I'd use the mount. That's what it's there for. But if you're going to do this, take the key out of the control box, out of the uh, turn off the spindle. There's no way the VFD can turn on when the key is not on. Uh, plug your probe in. It's going to work off input one. I would plug it into where you have it on your shop bot. And then touch it with your finger. Look for the red light on the actual probe. And then look for the green light on input one to turn back and forth on and off. So it's going to start probing here, but I'm going to pause this video and go back and actually show how it's set up in the software. And we'll come back to this. So to get the probe going, you'll actually use your ShopBot 3 software uh, or whatever version of software that you're using for your control software. If you haven't used a probe yet, I would recommend watching one of the tutorials on probing. I would also read the instruction manual that comes with it. It'll go into a lot more depth than what we're just showing here. Uh, and all I'm doing for this is underneath tools. And it's called the copy machine. And then you're setting up if you're doing a 2D or a 3D. Here's a little info too what type of probe, format, uh, for something like this, I'm just going to tell you I prefer to do a polyline DXF file. 
uh, that polyline will put it'll put a line in between every point and every point is every time the probe touches and when you're doing your settings here you can see by hovering over it, it does tell you what their different scan resolutions are obviously the smaller number that you put in here the better the scan resolution but just to remember that is the longer time that it's going to take um, so is it worth it you know for what you're doing yeah in this example I'd rather have a longer probe set up uh, of it taking extra time to copy it but getting a better scan resolution and then you just follow through and it's going to prompt you to save it and go through the different steps and that's how you would go ahead and get started with your probe, remember the probe's first movement when you're doing 2D like this is in the positive direction of of the Y axis. So that's why in that video you saw how the probe was set up. So let's go back and watch that probe in action. So here is a little bit more of a close up and you can see what it is. Remember the probe, when you get it, it does have different tips for doing different types of probing. So make sure you know what tip it is that you're using. And that's gonna be key here in a minute when we go back to the software and we uh, have to scale this probe example to the exact size of the original part so that every time it touches you can see that's where that that came from the scan resolution I'm doing a close-up here just to show you what happens on a 90 degree corner and when we go back to the file you'll see how that was brought in so uh, the probe's great it's not perfect it's not as fancy as say a scanner is going to be but for a four hundred dollar uh, accessory it's very useful for what it's able to do um, uh, so yeah if you're not familiar with the probe definitely look into it look at some of the different tutorial videos on it and the set of instructions and it will do a great job of explaining how the probe actually works for you so just note on this part though there are two holes separate from the outside profile so we're actually going to run the probe uh, copy machine three times the first time is doing the perimeter which you see when that job gets finished it saves a dot dxf file format of that probe of that of that what it just did now you use your keypad and move the probe over to where you want to probe next give it a new name and now you're scanning another portion of this part so you can do this pick this probe up and drop it as long as you don't lose position uh, of your axes when you probe these different holes and circles or shapes or whatever and then you import them into the software it will import them in the exact spot for wh from where they are so you'll see this here in just a sec so I pick up from that hole and then this little one I like to point this one out too where we're gonna go over uh, I'm sorry before we do that I actually gonna use a set of calipers here and I wanna mic out the actual size of that hole because when I go into my software I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit by the probe diameter the tip, the tip of the probe diameter. So I know I have a 0.99 on that hole. And this little one that I was referring to here, it's not that great of a job for doing a little tiny hole like this. It's a good reference point, and you'll see how we clean this up here in a second. So there's three different probe copies that's done to do just this one part. So let's take a look at that file. So here you can just see that there's three different jobs and there are .dxf, that's the file format. <clears throat> so you, what you can see is I had leg one, leg two, leg three. And that was for the perimeter of the leg, the hole, and then the other hole. So being that the part was taped down to the shop bot with the two-sided tape, it didn't move. So when I probe three different times, since I haven't lost location or moved anything, it's able to get all three locations and now when I import into my CAD software you'll see that it brings them all in in the correct space. So for this example I'm just going to open up a new version of the software set up my job right now it's 24 inches by 8 and I'm going to go ahead and bring this open and now I'm going to import in I'm actually importing in a vector because the probe turned it into a DXF already so there's my three parts so I'll click on the first one and there's my part now why is it shaped like this well it or positioned like this is because that's where it was in reference if you think back to the video from the bottom left corner of that desktop was here and then I just taped the probe on into that I taped this leg on before I probed it in that position so what you need to be careful about right now is not moving this around at all until you have brought everything in and at that point this is where I will import in now my leg 2 which is that hole 
and finally the other one you know name them whatever works for you and then you can see so a couple things to point out yes first of all this is great I've got my whole locations I've got this probe piece the right where it needs to be but there's a few things now that the probe um, didn't quite pick up on that we need to change a little bit and that's first of all that's not the the smoothest uh, roundest hole I've ever seen so being with that probe tip and that resolution it didn't give me a very good result so we'll have to clean this one up um, the 90 degree corners they were a 90 degree corner but they weren't a perfect 90 the way it was probed with that round tip going around so yes there is a little bit of a work the, the probe did a great job though however on these big long sweeps right here and we'll go in and look at how to clean clean this stuff up next and before we edit I just want to point out that you, I'm looking right here at the digitizing probe instructions that come with it and for the use people that have not ever used a probe before it goes through and tells you how to set it up how it all works adjusting the tips and whatnot but what I'm trying to point out to this right now is there's different probe tips that come the styluses different diameters quarter inch two millimeter eighth inch uh, so you need to, as the operator using this, you need to take that into account because you're going to have to do an offset. The side of the probe stylus is what touches your part, but when you set this up, uh, it's going off the center of this probe, so you'll have to do an offset. So remember, this probe, as neat as this is, is all that it is to do is basically just you know feeling its way along the edge of your part. Um, so it's not exactly going to land on the corner or obviously the circles that we just saw so we will have to do some editing and let's look at that right here so looking back here again at our part I just want to point out that uh, I've also brought in the original one and I just want to take the one that we just probed and the original one and lay them on top of each other so you can see that the original one the actual part is smaller than the probe because it probed out the uh, actual probe we use the side of the stylus instead of the center so what I needed to do was know what tip I was using and then I would come back down to my original part and I would do my offset and I would do this again for all the different parts of this and um, depending on the probe tip we would want half the diameter which would be the radius in this case it was 0.03 and I would just go in here and offset that in it brings that in I would actually prefer to uh, delete the original since I already have a copy of that one and same thing here I'd go and do that to all of mine get them to the correct size that they need to be and now when I was to bring these up and put them on top of each other they would line up except for the editing that I would still need to do on the corner and just to spare you from watching me for 20 minutes fumble around here yes I would use my editing of my objects and my vectors and I would come in and I would create these I would recreate these square corners I would obviously redraw these circles using the calipers I would actually measure the correct part and find out where it needed to be and get the correct size of what they needed to be and I would just use the draw circle tool and create these and get these specked out so again the probe did a, it did really good it got me really close it didn't get me exact because remember that stylus is just being dragged along there so yep there's going to be a little bit of cleanup in a part like this you may be have 15 minutes or so uh, in your CAD software getting it to match up to the original so without making this training a complete drawing exercise I went ahead and cleaned up the part on my own and now I'm just showing you the finished product here where we're actually cutting it out I first cut one out of a scrap piece of MDF made any adjustments I needed to before I went ahead and made the nice replica out of this red oak so yes we did cover quickly four different methods for this and each one of those could be brought into its own training in itself and look into it in more depth but these are just different options so look at the different type of parts that it is that you need to duplicate or replicate and find out which method is going to work best for, for you. They obviously all have their advantages and their disadvantages, and then you just pick the part that works for you. So with this one, simple enough. It's a little bit of cleanup, and it worked really well just using the probe, the 2D probe on this example for this one. I'd like to thank everybody for viewing today's training and tutorial on turning your physical parts into digital. 
If you're looking for more of these tutorials in depth on a lot of the things that we just started covering, you can always look at our training page. And we do have training tutorials and videos on here that cover a lot of stuff like our digitizing probe. If you're just learning the basics, you're new to this whole CNC, I did reference a lot the Vectric software. So that's something you're not quite familiar with, the drawing tools and the node editing. They have a lot of good stuff underneath their support training materials here as well. So between these two resources and getting out and practicing on your machine, this is a really good method for turning your physical parts and bringing them into the digital world. So thank you all and we will see you next time.